Last year on Halloween I uploaded my first video, about a spirit lamp with an eerie colored flame. This year I thought I'd do a bit of a follow-up based on some suggestions I got over on Reddit. There were a few suggestions to try to make it into a candle, and one particular suggestion sparked my interest. To make copper stereo. This is a really cool idea which basically involves combining copper and candle wax at a chemical level, and I really wanted to see if it would work to make a nice spooky green flame candle. To make the copper candle wax, I'm going to start with a saponification reaction of fat. This is about breaking apart the triglycerides in common fat to get access to the individual fatty acid tails. First, I dissolve a quantity of potassium hydroxide in water. The exothermic dissolution produces lots of heat, so it's best to add the compound slowly to cold water to avoid it boiling and spurting corrosive liquid everywhere. Next, I weigh out some fat, in this case, lard. This will act as the fuel for the candle. In today's day, candle wax is typically petroleum-based and is made from paraffin. However, in the old days, many candles were made from the fatty acid removed from lard in a similar way to what I'll be showing here. I mix the two together with gentle heating, which begins the saponification reaction. This is making soap, aka potassium stearate. There's many different kinds of soap, but I chose potassium as it's very water-soluble, which will make the coming reactions a little easier. Historically speaking, for candle making, calcium soaps would have been used instead of potassium. There's probably a few reasons for this, but one of the main ones is that calcium hydroxide used to be a much more accessible industrial chemical than potassium hydroxide. These saponification reactions are slow, and it was finally finished about a week later. What I have here is a very thick and gummy suspension of liquid soap, which I diluted with a little water. This is basically the same as what you'd find in a liquid soap dispenser next to the sink. Now it's time to replace the potassium atoms with the copper ions I'm hoping will make for a beautiful blue wax. For this, I dissolve copper sulfate in hot water. In the historical candle making practice, the soap would have been destroyed with sulfuric acid, rendering steric acid as a product. But I'm using the copper salt of sulfuric acid instead. That way, instead of steric acid, I'll get copper stearate. Pouring the copper sulfate into the soap leads to the two compounds swapping ions with each other. As soon as this happens, the extremely hydrophobic copper stearate precipitates, and the very soluble potassium sulfate dissolves into the water, separating the two compounds and pushing the equilibrium into making our beautiful blue copper wax. I was worried the reaction would be subtle, but instead the wax formed these wild clumps as it rejected the water, a little like curdling milk. Eventually, it separated into two distinct layers. I decanted off the top layer into a filter to let the residual water drain out. Then, after drying for a day or two, I was left with a promising looking product. To test it, I dissolved it into a little oil. While the fatty acid tails make it insoluble in water, they are readily soluble in other fats, and it had no problem combining with lamp oil and soaking up into a wick. Unfortunately, as it burned, there was no green flame color whatsoever. I caught a hint of green in the very base of the flame, but it was so barely perceptible that I was extremely disappointed. I believe this is because of the bright yellow of the flame, which is caused by the incomplete combustion byproduct of the burning fat, obscure any of the color of the copper ions. Last year's spirit lamp worked because the alcohol the copper salt was mixed with had a dim blue, almost invisible flame, allowing the copper to color it dramatically. Alternatively, I could make a type of non-fat wax called trimethyl citrate. This is used in those fun colorful birthday candles and is promising, but I lack the catalyst to make this stuff and only have a week till Halloween, so I decided to change gears. I figured if I couldn't make a green flame candle, I should at least try to make a green fireball, something pretty and eye-catching to make up for my failings. I've made alcohol-based fireballs before, so I figured I'd do the same thing but with the copper salt mixed in to make it nice and eerie. To begin, I'm going to make the same copper compound I used in my last Halloween video, copper chloride. 
A quick disclaimer, though copper chemistry is always beautiful and these reactions pose relatively minor risk to me, it's important to note that copper compounds can be dangerous for multiple reasons. Many copper salts, including all depicted in this video, as well as being poisonous, can harm the environment. And though I'm doing these reactions outside, I'm carefully containing and disposing of any waste generated. Copper chloride specifically is corrosive, acidic, and not something you'd want on your skin, in your eyes, or on your food. It's also important to note that it reacts with many metals including common ones like stainless steel and aluminum. The byproducts of these reactions can be even more dangerous than the copper chloride itself, so it's best to work cautiously. After reacting calcium chloride with copper sulfate to make copper chloride, and filtering off the byproduct of calcium sulfate, I started to boil down my fresh copper chloride solution. The blue color of the solution is caused by the hydration state of the compound. This is basically the copper chloride clinging to water molecules. As the solution heats up, the copper chloride loses its affinity for these water molecules and drops to a lower hydration state, which is green instead of blue. I think the color shift is really pretty to watch. After boiling down for a while, the solution begins precipitating clouds of glimmering powder with each bubble. It's important to note I'm using boiling chips here, as otherwise this step could get very messy. I turned off the heating and let the residual heat of the sand bath cook the solution down to a paste, which I then let dry overnight. Now I need alcohol to dissolve the chloride. I don't have any lab grade stuff on hand, but I do have white wine, so I decided to extract the alcohol from a rather tall glass of the stuff. I carried out a simple distillation of white wine with a little aluminum foil to act as a boiling chip. The goal here is to boil off the alcohol from the wine and condense it drip by drip. This will increase the concentration from the 14% common of wine to a substantially higher percentage, likely around 30 to 40%. After a couple hours, I'd collected a decent quantity of some pretty misty, moonshined brandy. I continued working sun up to sundown, and after a while had built up quite a collection of these little alcohol-filled vials. Now for one final distillation, I take all the alcohol I've distilled and put it in one flask. This time I'm doing a fractional distillation with the help of this beautiful Vigro column. This will take the alcohol to an even higher concentration, levels that are far too toxic for human consumption, but that will work great as fuel. As the vapor climbs the column, the higher boiling point compounds condense and drip back into the boiling flask. A thermometer at the top of the column can help me identify what compound is successfully making it up and out of the column at what time. The first being primarily methanol, then the next mostly ethanol with a little water which boils around 78C. Then after that, there's stuff that's largely just water. None of the segments are perfect though, and all will be to some extent a mixture of all three. With that done, I've reduced the quantity of alcohol I have by more than half, meaning it should be hopefully around twice as concentrated as it was before. It's beautiful and crystal clear now. However, I want to remove as much water as possible from my ethanol, so to try to dry it a little further, I took some of these beautiful Epsom salt crystals and dehydrated them in the oven to convert them into the powerful desiccant that is anhydrous magnesium sulfate. I stirred up my distilled ethanol and added little bit by little bit of some of the magnesium sulfate. After stirring for a while, very little had dissolved, which seemed like good news to me, suggesting that there was probably very little water present here. Next, I added in the copper chloride. Here's where I start making mistakes. I had left the chloride paste to dry on my shelf, but it really hadn't dried nearly as much as I needed it to, and by mixing it in, I had inadvertently added a decent amount of water back into my fuel. Not enough to prevent it from burning, but enough to cause problems for me down the line. Nevertheless, I now finally have a vial and a half of ethanol mixed with copper chloride to test the flame color of. I put a little on the end of a spoon and lit it. I was immediately disappointed. It was like there was no color at all at first. Eventually, some color showed up, but it was fleeting and very weak. I messed with the mixture a little and tried again and managed some improvement, but the color was still weaker than I was hoping. But I decided to give it a try with the gel anyways, which would be my next mistake. The alcohol gel fireball relies on this stuff, calcium acetate. 
This calcium salt is insoluble in alcohol, so by pouring a saturated aqueous solution of it into a high purity ethanol, it will precipitate out and form a gel of calcium acetate chains, solidifying the alcohol into a flammable clump. Nile Red has a good video on this, so I'll link to. As soon as I purred it in, however, I realized my mistake. When the solution turned bright blue, I had overlooked what in hindsight is the obvious fact that calcium acetate and copper chloride would react with each other to make copper acetate. Along with this, the Epsom salt I used to desiccate the alcohol reacted with the calcium acetate to produce calcium sulfate. All in all, I just made a flammable slop of toxic chemicals instead of the beautiful flammable snowball of toxic chemicals I was aiming for. However, I still want to see color, and luckily, I still have one ace hidden up my sleeve. This is the methanol I distilled out of my wine. I only have a few drops worth. It's lucky I used wine, as the pectins in grapes lead to a higher amount of this stuff than in most other alcoholic beverages. It came out first in the distillation, and has much less water in it than the ethanol had, as it doesn't form the azeotrope that leads to water contamination in ethanol. I dried the rest of my copper chloride in the oven to make sure it was anhydrous, and took it down to my workshop to mix it with the methanol. It was getting dark fast, and to do this in my off-grid workshop, I needed to light a candle. I soaked my concoction into a good old-fashioned wick and gave it a light. An immediate, brilliant green flame burst to life. This is what I'd been looking for. I blew it out quick, and placed the wick in a tiny little terracotta brazier. It's not the same as the fireball, but honestly, I like this way better. The flame is larger and more ethereal than the spirit lamp I made last year, and the brazier lets me carry the flame in my hand as I wander the countryside like a ghost with my spirit flame to guide me. At least it would if I had enough to keep it burning for more than a few seconds at a time. It's been a long year since I started this channel, but I've deeply enjoyed making these videos and hope to make many more this year. If you enjoyed, please subscribe to my channel and share it with people you think might be interested. It would mean the world to me. If you have any suggestions for how to improve these videos, please leave a comment. I really appreciate your feedback. Thanks for watching and Happy Halloween!